In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Workbench Render Engine. So if you've ever changed the render engines in Blender, then you may have noticed that there is this Workbench Engine. So if you change it to Workbench and then hit F12 to render, you can see that basically it renders out a preview of our view. Now what it doesn't render is it doesn't render the overlays in the viewport. So you can see like the little grid here in the 3D view and also like if you select something Thing. If you render that, it's not going to show that. You can see, you can't really see any of these overlays. So if you click this little button, it's going to turn the overlays off. And if for some reason you do want to render out an image of the exact viewport, you can click right up here on view and then click on viewport render image. And you can see it's actually going to render out the selection and also like the grid and the different things like that. Now the workbench render engine, it has a rendered mode just like the other render engines. So if you press Z, move your mouse up, go into rendered view, you can see now that looks like what the render was. You can see over here, it looks a little bit different, like I have a shadow and things. I'll get to that later. But when I render this, you can see it doesn't look exactly the same. It looks a little bit different. It looks like this. This is what the render looks like. Now, I remember when Blender 2.8 first came out and the Workbench engine was in Blender. This confused me at first because what I would do is I would go into the Workbench engine. Then what I would do is I would click right up here and then I could change everything. But then when I render it out, you can see it doesn't look the same, like there's not the shadows and the matte cap is different things like that. So what you have to do instead if you want to change what it looks like in the render is you don't change the viewport shading up here you don't change like the mat cap and the things here you change them over here in the render settings so these settings right over here this is just going to change what you see in the solid view but then if you go into rendered mode these are the settings down here so they pretty much are the same exact settings you can see these settings and these settings they're pretty much the same but this one affects what is rendered in the workbench engine. So you can see right here on the lighting, there is studio, matte cap, and flat. So you can change these. Uh, you can see there's like these different studio lights. These are basically just different matte caps. So you can make it whatever you like. That's kind of a nice one. I do like that. Or you can click on matte cap and change the matte cap. Um, I've added in my own matte caps. I also created my own matte caps. If you'd like to watch a video on how to create your own matte caps, I'll leave the link in the description. And then there also is the color here. So you can change the color. So there's material object, vertex, single, random, and texture. Uh, if you want to just change like all of them, you can just change it to single, change all the colors. If you click on the material one, you can then just select one of the objects and go over to the material properties. And then right down here on it, the viewport display, you can actually change this. So you can change like the metallic, you can change the color and the roughness. And you can do that for all the objects. So like this one right here, this is a wood material. So I just made it like a brown color. Now there also are these other really cool options. There is backface culling. So what backface culling does is it doesn't show the back side of the faces. So you can see I have this like plain light and here's the front of it. And then this is actually the back side of the face. I'm just going to turn that off though. I don't really use it for many things. There's also this x-ray mode. So this will allow you to like see through the objects. Pretty cool. I don't use it very much, but it does look pretty cool. Let me just turn this off. Now there's also this shadow. This one is really cool. Um, if I'm creating like product images, for instance, like this war cannon, uh, you can purchase this war cannon. It's a 3D model I'm selling. Link will be in the description. But when I'm creating product images for 3D models or things like that, or if I just want to showcase the 3D mesh in like an artwork that I finished, I really like turning on this shadow. Um, and then you can also click on this little gear here and drag around and you can actually change like where the sun is. There's also cavity. This one is a really nice one. It really just helps to uh, pop out the 3D mesh. You can see the shape of it a little bit better. So the ridge that's going to make the parts on the very corners or the parts that are kind of popping out it's going to make it lighter and then the valley that's going to make the dark parts a bit darker so you can see like that crack right in there it's making that darker and so it's sort of like an ambient occlusion look so you can see before and after it just kind of pops out the model makes it look a bit easier to see the shape and then there also is an outline that's really cool you can change the outline um, I do really like using this when I'm like showcasing a 3d model and you can also change the color of the outline 
line. And then there also is this depth of field. Now, if you turn on the depth of field, probably nothing's going to happen. And that's because you actually need to set up the depth of field in your camera. So if you click on the camera, you can then go to the camera settings. You can turn on depth of field and just like select an object. And then you can play around with the F stop. So maybe 0 0.005, something like that. That's way too strong, actually. And now you can see that like the things over here are kind of being blurred. And then the Canon is in more focus. Now what's super cool about this workbench engine is it doesn't actually mess up any of the materials or the lighting or the other things that you have set up. So if you just want to like go ahead and do some product images or just showcase like the 3D model, then when you want to go back, you can just click back over on EV or cycles and you can see that it doesn't actually mess up the materials or the lighting or anything like that and it will render out just how it was. So as you can see, the workbench render engine is super easy to use and it can be very helpful when you want to render out like product images and just like showcase your 3d model or show the 3d mesh of your scene so that's it for this video i hope this video is helpful and thank you for watching and i hope to see you in a future video